Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of And the Sky Bled by S. Hottie. This is a fantasy book that comes out October 15th, I guess today, from Bindery Books. I received this art from Neck Alley in exchange for a fair review. And sorry that I am posting a bit late. I got <laughs> just got so busy the last couple weeks, I had to like postpone a bunch of filming of videos. Oh my god. Anyway. Compelling, unique, and quick-paced, And the Sky Blood is an impressive debut. What's it about? Amid the chaos of a dying city ruled by colonizers, three rivals, a thief, a slumlord, and an heiress, race to find a hidden cache of magic that will decide the city's fate. In the occupied city of Tejumaya, Kalor, a magical fossil fuel, is found only in the blood rains that fall from the sky. While a six-month drought has brought Teumaya to a desperate standstill, rumors of a secret stash of magic propel three unlikely treasure seekers to risk everything. Tenacious and street-smart Zane has been forced to seal Kalor for her slumlord bosses for years. Finding the magic reserve might be her only key to freedom, but she'll have to contend with Erevan Kotar, a slumyard himself and an ambitious revolutionary hoping to use the same magic to save his people from the mysterious illness devastating the slums, and to bolster a fight against their oppressors. Meanwhile, Eris Anastasia Dracos leads the ruling council of Teomaya from the safety of a nearby island. With the hidden magic, she could finally take full control of the city and crush the slums beneath her unyielding fist. As Zane, Erevan, and Anastasia draw closer to finding the treasure, their paths tangle and not for the first time. They met before, a decade ago, in a fire that destroyed each of their lives in different ways. Their reunion might bring the already weakened city to its knees. Exploring the devastating mechanisms of power, the searing climate fantasy breathes life into a crumbling world hovering on the brink of total destruction. A few things kept this book from being amazing, but overall I found it stunning and quite fascinating. The idea behind the story, the Kalor, was something I had never come across before. It led to some really interesting and cool imagery, as well as the basis for the main conflict. Essentially, Teomaya has been occupied by the Genanese people because it's the only place left in the world that hasn't been entirely sucked dry of Kalor. It's clearly a reference to fossil fuels and natural resource scarcity, which was something I thought was clever in that it was not that heavy-handed. The blurb kind of makes it so, but I don't know, I didn't find it was like too obvious. Essentially, you have one nation waging war on others, using up their resources, and then moving on. They're essentially like alien planet looters, you know, like from Independence Day, they move from one place to another, and of course this wrecks havoc on not only the population, but the planet itself, causing climate disasters. So we have this setup, which I found super interesting and compelling, but there were some things that were a bit muddled for me. If the sky rains like blood, does it also rain regular rain? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that question was ever answered. If it was, then I must have missed it. Um, if not, you know, where does drinking water come from? You know, <laughs> as I said, this wasn't really addressed. Um, who was ru running the city? So this was something that, again, I might have missed it. I don't think I did, though. I generally pay attention when I'm reading. So I understood that there's this council on the island that Anastasia was part of that made up mainly of that was made up mainly of the colonizing force with a few seats given to two other subjugated peoples who helped them with the current occupation but who was in charge of the city itself like the day-to-day -day running of it the slums aren't the only area of the city so is there like a mayor <laughs> We only ever see the rulers on the island and then we see the slumlords. We don't see who actually controls kind of the the, the city kind of, as I said, like day to day. <laughs> and the slumlords seem to be considered very important in terms of plans to the council. So I wasn't sure how or why they had such power and whether they, you know, participate in the daily running of the city or whether that's just something separate we never heard about. I just, I guess I wasn't sure how the city functioned in that way <laughs> i don't know because there's mentions of like zane's parents or adoptive parents whoever they are uh like living in like outside of the slums so i'm like okay what other areas of the city are there <laughs> now this could just be questions that i have because as you know if you follow my channel i am very obsessed with like city infrastructure questions because i'm a huge nerd for that so that is probably just a me thing but i will say that the novel's biggest problem is that it's either too short or there are too many characters with too many facets to them. You have point of views from the one slumlord, you know, this young woman who works for him, and then one of the council members. All three are linked by this mysterious event. It ends up not being that mysterious, so why it was kind of teased out in such a way was a little bit of a letdown. It would have worked better for me to have had one character in the dark or something like that, rather than deliberately hiding the information from the reader. 
as because I, you know, could tell this was the technique being used, it derailed it slightly for me. <laughs> and on top of these three, you have by proxy other characters without point of views, but still have high importance to the story. A second slumlord, two guards, a Caller Miner, I think, and her daughter, a woman's father, some other random woman, another man who dies, and the miner's father. <laughs> as well as some other minor minor characters. So those are just secondary characters. We also have minor characters on top of that. The book is not that long. I'm not saying that these people weren't needed as their backstories were important to tie into the main characters and to, you know, make the plot make sense. <laughs> but this takes away from the main characters or the backstories of these secondary characters feels too short. It's so annoying because like, I, it's not like it's that bad. Like I understood everybody. I understood their motivations. I just was like, I want a bit more from everybody. <laughs> it, like the book almost got there. It almost got there. But every single person had something missing about them or part of their arc was truncated so that it didn't land as strongly as it could have. Like everything, as I said, made sense. You know, the characters that were likable or dislikable based on how you're supposed to read them, you know, that all worked. They all had their parts to play in what was really an intricate story. There was just something missing in terms of just kind of like broadening everything out. I'm just going to give one example. So there's this character that has a romance that I was really into because it's kind of one of my favorite tropes, but it was too short. <laughs> it happened almost without any real buildup to develop the emotions. I could have used a few more scenes with them to, about, you know, why they liked one another, kind of when this shift happened, maybe some more yearning in there to make their coming together kind of more explosive. You know, the same character also seems to have developed a friendship with another character at, you know, at the end of the book, like to the extent that they were hugging, but were this friendship kind of came or developed from was missing. Like I could piece it together myself, but I wanted to kind of see it <laughs> to make it really kind of hit home. Yet, I will stress that this book is super exciting and fun and addictive to read. I love third person multi POV and this book just nails it. All three characters felt distinct. You know, the writing is just lovely. Um, this is an arc, so this is uh, this might be removed or changed for the final, but I'm gonna read it anyway. But her father was a wolf that had never been among sheep. He didn't know their wool was made of barbed wire. I thought that was cool. And then there's also this line. It's from like a lovely letter that I was like, oh my God. I am more than certain than ever that you complete me. Your eyes hold both the softness of the night and the allure of shadows. Your touch is the comfort of candlelight and the thrill of a dark roiling ocean under the slimmest blade of moonlight. You are love and wrath alike and I covet every inch of you. Oh. <laughs> That was great. The writing in this book is absolutely lovely. I, I will 100% be checking out more books by this author. On top of these lovely turns of phrase, you know, the descriptions of the climate disasters are fraught and tense and there are some really exciting action scenes and the finale or the and the climax of the book is really well done with a really interesting twist to it that I was like, oh, okay. Like this book has so much going for it. I think it just should have been like a trilogy or at least a duology. And this is coming from someone who loves books on the shorter side and prefers standalone novels. So that's saying a lot. <laughs> As I said, this book has a great twist at the end, an emotional and uh, engaging climax, and despite not feeling you knew them as much as you could have, characters that you do care about. That's the thing. The characters are not, they're not flat. You know, they're not, they don't rely on tropes. They just needed a bit more focus at times. You know, pivotal em elements about them are glossed over or told in passing, where I think broadening them out would have turned this book from that was great to that was awesome. Still, if any of this does sound interesting to you, it really does move at a great clip and the concepts are so cool. I definitely recommend checking it out. As I said, I'm going to read more from this author 100%. I mean, I think it was a debut and debuts are always a little bit, you know, it takes, it takes like two or three books for you to really hit your stride. And I mean, if this was their first book, then I can't imagine what her second or third will be like. So yeah, super, super uh, stoked for that. So yeah, thank you again to the publisher for the e and to Nick Alley and yeah.